Okay, my name is Stephen Key, and I think my story is a lot like a lot of people that are listening to this video. When I was a little bit younger, quite a bit younger, I realized I really didn't want to work for, for anybody, and I wanted to be creative, and I wanted to kind of design my own life. I knew deep down that working for somebody else wasn't really going to be something I was going to be happy with. And I wanted to do something that I would wake up every day and, and just be excited. I wanted to make things with my hands even. I wanted to be creative. And I wanted to kind of control my own destiny. Uh, but like a lot, of, a lot of people that are listening to this, I didn't really have any skills. Like I wasn't an engineer. And I really didn't have any business experience. And, um, but I did know that I wanted to be creative. And I don't think I was that great, you know, making things either. I did study art a little bit, and I knew the pleasure of making something with your hands. My dad gave me great advice. He said, if you find something you truly love to do, there's a good chance you'll never work a day in your life. And he was, he, he was absolutely right. He, he also told me to create great wealth. You need to find something that doesn't require your hands or your presence and has a multiplying effect. And I didn't really know what that meant until much, much later when I was working at a toy company called Worlds of Wonder. And I was over in China uh, helping with the manufacturing of Teddy Ruxpin. And I was on that production line and I was over there for months at a time and it was getting, I was getting tired and I wanted to go home. And I kept on thinking, what am I doing wrong here? And I remembered that my father had told me that, those lessons of creating great wealth. And it dawned on me that the creator of Teddy Ruxpin, Ken Forsey, he wasn't there. And he definitely wasn't using his two hands. And he had that multiplying effect because all those Teddies were coming off the production line. And it kind of went, I had this aha moment. I realized that's what I wanted to do. You see, Ken had licensed his technology, um, Teddy Ruxpin, to Worlds of Wonder, and he was collecting royalties on every Teddy they sold, regardless of where he was living. And that's the lifestyle that I wanted. I learned about licensing on that production line in China. And when I finally got back to the States, I quit World's Wonder and I decided I wanted to create my own products, my own inventions, and I wanted to show those ideas to companies. And I just knew deep down if I showed a company a great idea, they would probably take it from me and pay me. I wasn't fearful. I just knew that companies need ideas. And at the time, two of the industries that were actively looking for ideas from the outside was the toy industry. They were working with outside toy inventors for years and years and years. And also, uh, the novelty gift industry was always, always looking for ideas as well. So I started creating ideas and sending those ideas to those companies. And very quickly, I was able to license ideas. And they brought them to market for me. And I was hooked. I was so excited about seeing my ideas on the store shelves. I was so excited about seeing an idea that came out of here, and next thing you know, it's on TV, or you see it uh, down at the local toy stores, such as Toys R Us. I was hooked. The very first item that I had licensed was an airplane. I had teamed up with someone I met at Worlds of Wonder, Russell Hicks, and he was doing all the illustrations for the Teddy Ruxpin books, and he, I had, I had this idea of these puppets, and I wanted to do an airplane and a rocket and some other type of flying vehicles. And I showed it to Russell, and he drew these up, and, he, and I sent them over to this company called Applause, and they licensed those puppets from us. And that was actually the very first thing I licensed. So I kept on doing these drawings and sending them over to Applause, and they were licensing a lot of ideas, I think probably over 20 at least. And I was hooked at that time. I thought it was fairly easy. Uh, I also started to design a few things in the toy industry, and, and one of them was called the Michael Jordan wall ball. I didn't call I didn't call it the wall ball at the time, but I loved to play these indoor Nerf 
uh, basketball in my office, just trying to come up with ideas. But I didn't like the backboard because it was square and had this little image of Michael Jordan. And it was just horrible. So I, I took a poster of Michael Jordan, put it on the backboard, and, and I sent it off to Ohio Art. And within three days, I had a licensing agreement. And the Mike, they called it the Michael Jordan Wall Ball, which was a great, great name. And it sold for over 10 years. And there was even a commercial on Saturday mornings um, that I just love to watch. Go one on one with Michael Jordan right in your own room with Michael Jordan Wall Ball. Best looking backboard I ever seen. Michael Jordan Wall Ball from Ohio Art Sports. But I was kind of surprised how easy it was to license ideas to companies. I didn't spend a lot of money on prototypes. I didn't file intellectual property. In fact, I didn't really know what a patent was at the time. And I didn't really build expensive prototypes. I showed companies concepts. And I knew deep down that it was really a numbers game, that if I could test the market really quickly with a drawing, a sketch, or a sell sheet and see if there's interest, that was probably the smart thing to do. I knew that if I if I was if I wanted to be successful at this and I wanted to do this full time and I wanted to make a living licensing my ideas, I had to come up with a, a system that allowed me to test my ideas very, very quickly. And it worked. I came up with a 10 step system that I used throughout my whole career. And then I started to share that knowledge with other people. And one of the biggest ideas I licensed using that 10 step system was a rotating label that basically just delivered 75% more space on a container. You see, there's never enough space. And I read this article in the Modesto B, and I came up with this concept and I started to show it to companies and soon enough uh, ended up on TV. I'd licensed it to CCL Label and we sold hundreds of millions of labels. Sundown Herbals presents its remarkable twist and learn label. It works like an herbal information center that helps you learn about herbs simply by turning the label. Sundown's new twist and learn label, where to turn for help. One day I met my partner, Andrew Krauss. Uh, by accident, he was running a very large inventors group in Silicon Valley, and I went there on a Saturday morning and, and met him, and I brought some of the things that I had licensed to his meeting. And I just showed him the people, and everybody was really surprised. And, and Andrew knew something was up because he was teaching inventors how to commercialize their inventions. But most of the inventors were not having a lot of success. So here I show up and I, I pull out all these things I had licensed and I had a crowd around me and Andrew knew I was doing something very different. And he knew that knowledge was probably going to be very, very helpful to a lot of inventors. So now I, I teamed up with Andrew Krauss. We started this company called InventRight and I started, oh, just talking about this process of licensing. And soon enough, we had a lot of people that were following us and they were taking my course. And then one day the phone rang and it was someone from McGraw Hill, the San Francisco office. And they said, Steve, why don't you write a book? I thought, why would I want to write a book? He said, well, you're doing something very different. It looks like you're having a lot of success. You have a lot of people that are following your 10 steps. So why don't you write a book? And sure enough, I did. And it became fairly popular. It actually surprised me. It was back in 2011. And we called it One Simple Idea. I didn't really think at the time that anybody would really care. I really didn't know anything about writing a book. So I just did it. I told my story. And that story resonated with a lot of people. You see, there's a lot of people like myself that just don't want to start businesses. And there's a lot of people that just don't want to quit their day job. And they want to be creative and they want to share that creativity with the world. So when I told my story about what I wanted to do, there was a lot of other people that connected with my story. And I, to tell you the truth, it surprised me. And, and uh, it was probably one of the greatest things I've ever done. I remember when I got that call from McGraw Hill and what did, I, what did I know about writing a book? So I called a good friend of mine at the time, Tim Ferriss. I, he was one of my students early on when Andrew and I were teaching these 10 steps. And he had written a book uh, called The Four Hour Work Week, and that book just became huge. And it was a bestseller. In fact, I think it's a bestseller even today. And when 
I was asked to write this book. The first thing I did was reach out to, to Tim. And I said, Tim, um, McGraw-Hill wants me to write a book. What should I do? And he said, Steve, uh, if you do decide to write a book, realize one thing. Whatever you do, make sure you give everything away. Don't hold back. Write this book like it's the last book you'll ever write. That was the best advice I could have ever received from anyone because I didn't hold back. I wrote everything I knew about the 10 steps that I have been using. I poured it out. I did not hold anything back. So Tim, I cannot thank you enough for giving me that great advice. I remember when the book came out in 2011, I was a little nervous. I, what did I know about writing a book? And I didn't think it would, it would sell. I didn't think anybody would ever read it or even find it. But sure enough, we sold a lot of books and it, people started talking about it and they started sharing the book. And before you know it, we started seeing all these people embrace these 10 steps and they started to follow me and they started to write me notes. And before you know it, uh, one simple idea has been, um, has been translated in I think five different languages and the sales of the books just kept on coming in and the reviews kept on coming in and people really liked the book. Now, I have to tell you, it, it lays out my 10 steps in the process that I've used in a very simple story format, but that story really connected with a lot of people. Book sales started to come in and McGraw-Hill was pretty happy about it. And I got this call, they said, Steve, come on out, we want you to uh, do a little uh, PR. There's a couple TV stations that would like to have you on. I thought, well, this is going to be really fun. But I, I knew a little bit about uh, being on national TV, just a little bit. But I was excited about it. And soon enough, Janice and I flew out to New York and we did a couple of spots on national TV. Here to tell us how to become no risk entrepreneurs through licensing concepts to companies. We're joined by Stephen Key. He's the author of the book, One Simple Idea. guest has tips to help turn your inventions into a licensing gold mine. Stephen Key is the co-founder of InventRight and has successfully licensed more than 20 simple ideas. Soon I was traveling around the country to a lot of groups, a lot of clubs, inventing clubs across the country. I'm speaking at universities. People were asking me to talk about the book, bring some books, sign some books. So I started traveling around and just had a wonderful experience meaning people that had read one simple idea. Companies all over the world have realized that they need to open their doors. For them to truly be competitive today, it's all about innovation. It's all about new products. So open innovation is so exciting and it's exploding. When I first started out, it was just in a couple different industries, but now it's in every industry. I've seen products get licensed in the toy industry, pet, DRTV, automotive, uh, health, beauty, fitness, uh, you name it. It's in all these different industries now that companies need ideas from us. And the reason why, to stay competitive today, you have to keep on coming up with new ideas. So they've opened their doors to, to look at ideas from us. So this, these 10 steps that I have in the book kind of outline what you need to do to reach out to these companies, these companies that have opened the doors and want to work with us inventors. Now today, the reason why I'm doing this short little video, uh, we're celebrating 10 years. It's been 10 years since I wrote One Simple Idea and we have over 800 five-star reviews on Amazon. Little did I know that this little, <laughs> this little yellow book would touch so many people's hearts. And I have to tell each and every one of you that's watching this video, Thank you very much for commenting. Thank you very much for purchasing One Simple Idea. But thank you very much for following the 10 steps and, and not just sitting on the couch, not just spending money on prototypes or filing patents, not just letting your dreams die. I'm glad that you picked up the book. I'm glad that you're doing something with those ideas because the roadmap is all laid out in this book of how you can license or rent those ideas to companies that are looking for ideas. I just want to thank each and every one of you for reading One Simple Idea. 
And please keep on sending me your photographs and sharing your stories with me. I love to hear from you. This is Stephen Key. Thank you very much. There's a great idea in each of us. But it's truly magical to see it come to life. Sharing your creativity with the world has never been easier. We can help. Thank you.